Happy Monday. Welcome to the Healing She Got Faith show. This is Lily, your self-love advocate. She got faith, whatever you want to call me. Happy Monday. Oh my goodness. Y'all, I am on a natural high right now because last week, was just amazing. Like last week, I went to Detroit to meet my team at Total Entertainment Radio to support them in their play. Nobody wants a weak man too. And to meet some people that I've met in Detroit and have worked with and even sponsored a couple of their events. If y'all remember, I don't remember what episode number off the top of my head, but Elena Dillard, um, I got to meet her and her husband in person, and Detroit was just so eye-opening. And then last week, healing, she got faith turned two, and then on Thursday, April 14th, healing, she got faith, and we went live on Fox 2 News in St. Louis. So it has just been a very eventful week. I've been doing a lot, a lot of traveling this month, um, business trips and leisure, but it has been a lot and I'm excited. I'm excited to see where Healing She Got Faith is going. I'm excited to see where everyone has a story is going. I am just extremely excited. So with that being said, you are listening to the Healing She Got Faith radio talk show on Total Entertainment Radio. You will catch us here every Monday at 3 p.m. Central. And I am your host, and I'm Lily. I am the founder of Healing She Got Faith. And yeah, I am your local self love advocate. I'm a community social worker, and I thoroughly just enjoy loving people. And this month is just a month to celebrate myself and celebrate my organization. And with that being said, I am just super, super, super excited for what is in store for us because it has been an amazing couple weeks. So, let me be quiet and let's start off with our icebreaker, which I have the universe has your back, which some people actually might be very familiar with this deck of cards. It is also a book, but it's really popular. And then also to um, these are newer cards that I've kind of been using the last couple of weeks, but the self-care wisdom card. So we're going to pick from both of those. We're going to see what lies um for me so i am picking from the universe has my back i'm gonna be honest with y'all i did not shuffle so we just gonna randomly pick some cards from the deck so this first card says my capacity to tune in to the energy of love gives me the words i need when i'm ready to speak up the compassion i need when it's time to forgive and the power i need when i am lost we gonna talk about that because that's powerful now let's go over to self-care and I just randomly picked a card. It says success. This is a word, y'all. Today is a really good day. You're in the flow. Problems are solved quickly and easily. Helpful people show up for you and unexpected gifts fall into your lap. These are all going together. I'm so excited. Let's see what this card says. This is from Universe Has My Back. Let's see. There is a stream of love supporting my dreams. That is very true. And then I actually picked two. My outer experiences are a reflection of my internal condition. Yes. So those are for the universe has my back. Let's see. What's this? Reassess. You have the right to change your mind. Okay. So let's pick one more. Rebel, it's time to celebrate the fact that you don't fit in. Stand on your own feet. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. So if you're new here, I pick affirmation cards. That is an icebreaker. We always do an icebreaker every time I heal and she got faith, whether it's with me, whether it's with a guest. Um, everybody does it. We literally pick the cards and we discuss if it resonates. So let's talk about this first one. My capacity to tune into the energy of love Gives me the words I need when I'm ready to speak up. The compassion I need when it's time to forgive. And the power I need when I am lost. And the card from self-care. These two I picked together. It says success. Today is a really good day. You're in the flow. Problems are solved quickly and easily. Helpful people show up for you. And unexpected gifts fall into your lap. So 
with this week, I've been meeting and working with a lot of people who have honestly just believed in me and who have honestly been trying to connect me and network me with other people to really show off healing she got faith and everything that we have to offer here. And I have been praying and journaling and manifesting like these wonderful people to just come into my life. Like I'm so tired of doing everything on my own and I'm so tired of like just not having dependable people. So like really putting it out there, you know, hey God, I'm gonna throw it. I hope you catch it. Um, I really want supportive people. I really want people who like genuinely want to be here. I can support them. They support me. It's a give and take. It's not a give, 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 which is what I'm used to. But, you know, being very honest with myself, like I am tired. I'm drained. So I really need people in my circle. I have been saying for the last couple of months, I want to level up. I want to meet a different person group of people. I want to meet a new level of people. And I mean that like, I am ready for the next step. I am ready for the next level. I am ready for whatever it is that God has in store for me. I am ready for that. And I'm ready for that next movement. This card from the universe has my back. My capacity to tune into the energy of love gives me the words I need when I'm ready to speak up. That line in itself, so my quote is, love you the way you love the world, right? That sign, that line in itself gives me the energy to tune in and be able to speak up for myself. I know I just paraphrased that, but this is so important because usually I am the person that I'm like, oh, it's whatever, like, it's fine, like, very laissez-faire, but recently, y'all know, like, People need to put respect on the type of work that I'm doing. People need to respect me as a businesswoman. People need to respect me as a person who is very passionate. A lot of people tend to walk over me because I am so doggone nice. And I genuinely love people. And honestly, I'm very understanding. Like, there's no reason to lie. There's no reason to, like, give me excuses. Like, at the end of the day, life happens for a human. But with that being said, like, people need to learn to keep their word People need to apologize when they've made a mistake. People need to learn to respect me. And so I'm able to advocate for myself. I can advocate for the rest of the world. But when it comes to advocating for me, I'm quiet as a mouse. That's not, that's no longer the case. It says my capacity to tune in to the energy of love give me, gives me the words I need when I'm ready to speak up. I am now ready to speak up, y'all. And people are seeing it. People are seeing the difference in me. I want you to know how I feel. I want you to know where I'm at. I don't want any confusion at all. You need to know where I'm coming from. Not in a disrespectful way, but in a like an advocate way. Like how I would advocate for a client, I'm going to advocate for myself. The compassion I need when it's time to forgive. This is huge too because I don't want to grow cold. I don't want to um, have a cold heart and the power I need when I am lost. Yeah, sometimes doing this entrepreneurship journey, sometimes being in this thing, you will feel lost. I'm not going to sit up here and tell you that being my own boss is the way to go. It's fun. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I mean, I've probably hated it more than I have enjoyed it. But I want you all to hear that because social media will have you thinking. That is so easy to be your own boss. And I'm here to tell you, if you want to know the real story, come talk to me. Okay. So the second one from the universe has my back is there is a stream of love supporting my dreams. Y'all, last week proved that from people I work with, from visiting Detroit, I felt so famous going to Detroit. I felt like I was living the lavish lifestyle, y'all. It was beautiful. I've never felt so much love and support than I've ever felt, y'all. Rebel, it's time to celebrate the fact that you don't fit in. Stand on your own two feet. So let's talk about it, y'all. Let's talk about it. I don't fit in, and I've never fit in. There has always been something different about me. I don't quite fit over here. I don't quite fit over there. Everybody loves me, but yet I just feel like an outcast. I just feel like I'm not fitting in. Whether that's me dressing, whether that's me talking, whether that's my ideas, whether it's my business, whether it's whatever. It is now time to embrace that there is only one Lily. There is only one Lisa Inez Nolan. There is only one. 
which is why Healing She Got Faith is such a unique organization, okay? I have to learn to embrace myself. I wasn't made to look like everybody else. And so I need to put some respect on my own name and continue to love me the way I love the world, you all. And the last two cards, my outer experiences are, ref are a reflection of my internal conditions. So before I would be scared to read something like this because my internal conditions weren't that good. But as I've been on this healing journey, oh boy, as I've been on this healing journey, my internal is really starting to manifest into this external, okay? Because that is a word for somebody. Somebody needed to hear that because for so long, for so long, you have been hurting inside. For so long, you have been hiding. And let me tell you, I'm talking to myself here because I didn't used to speak up. I didn't used to tell people how I felt. I let it slide. It, listen, I'm forgiving. It is what it is. But no, I am starting to feel better because I am starting to feel to be honest with myself and I'm starting to be honest with everybody else. So yes, my outer experiences as of today, yes, definitely reflect my internal because I've started that healing process. I've started that process of really knowing what's, what to do, when to do it, how to say it, when to say it, okay? And the last card from the self-care, reassess. You have the right to change your mind. And that is the thing, y'all, because I was one of those people that once I was into it, I was stuck. I was faithful. I was loyal. I was your ride or die. But I'm coming to a place in my life where sometimes the things I think I'm okay with and I'm starting to learn and see true colors. I'm not okay with it. So I have to be okay with the fact that it's okay that I changed my mind on somebody. It's okay that I changed my mind on something. It's okay that I don't um, continue to be loyal or commit to something that bothers my soul, okay? Because there have been times where I have been completely miserable, completely miserable because I stayed in a situation that I should not have stayed in because I was not being honest with how I truly felt. Wow, that was a word that was total improv. I, I don't even have my notes up today, y'all. Today is coming straight from excitement, gratitude, and gratitude, okay? Because this last week has been completely amazing all right so let's go ahead and take a break and when we come back i'm going to we're going to talk about reflection and celebration so make sure you come on back you do not want to miss it Welcome back to the Healing She Got Faith show. It is Lily, your self-love advocate, and you are listening to us on Total Entertainment Radio. Yes, so I hope you did not miss that icebreaker. It was good. It was improv. Y'all, I don't even have notes today. I am strictly speaking from my heart, and I'm stri strictly speaking from like what has been real in the last week, well, really this last month, because April has been nothing but opportunity for me. April has been nothing but excitement for me. April has truly shown me where I am going and where I have come from, okay? <laughs> so let's reflect a little bit. Last week was the 15-year mark of losing my father, and I lost him in 07, April 12th of 07. And I lost him. Um, he had just dropped me off at school. I was a freshman in high school, and about an hour later, he had had a heart attack and passed away. In 2020, I decided to launch a blog healing she got faith and i wanted it to be kind of like an online platform of where people can kind of just come and express themselves have forums blogs i wasn't looking to turn it into a business i was not looking to make money off of it i honestly just created a blog which was terrible y'all like misspelled words like terrible um I launched a YouTube. YouTube was horrible. My voice was so soft. There was noise everywhere. I mean, literally, it was just going to be one of them things where like, okay, I can go and chat and meet 
people who are grieving on here, but it, seriously, like it was not my money maker. And then in November of 2020, I finally got the legal paperwork to make it a business. And part of that was because people were like, you got something going here, you know, you're a master's level of social work, like you can definitely do this. And I just, at the time, I honestly just did not think of this as a moneymaker. Like it was honestly like, people need resources. I want to be a resource. I want to provide something for people because there's a lot of us hurt. 2020, in 2020, that was also part of the pandemic, grief left and right. In 2020, George Floyd was also murdered in front of all of us and grief left and right. Breonna Taylor, there were multiple deaths happening, grief all around us. On top of everybody had lost somebody during COVID, whether it was to COVID, whether it was to some, something else. We were all losing something. I was tired of seeing people hurt. I was tired of seeing people not have the resources to be able to heal themselves. And so with that being said, I launched this. And then as time went on, I worked on the different type of services I wanted to provide. And then I ended up finishing my book. So I entered into this authorship journey. It all happened so fast. It happened to the point where like, I really can't tell you like when and where things had ended up happening, how they happened, what was the reasoning. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it kind of just fell in into my lap, honestly. And I kind of just flowed with it. I never imagined myself being my own boss. I never imagined myself being an entrepreneur. I never wanted to be my own boss because it just looked like a lot of work. And let me tell you, it is a lot of work, y'all. Please do not let social media and everything else convince you that it is a walk in the park. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I'm being real with you. It can be extremely hard, especially if you're somebody like me who has depended on other people and has constantly had to do it on your own. When the people you pay, the people you trust, they are not as committed as you are. One thing about being in entrepreneurship, nobody will represent you or your business the way you do. Just like yourself, nobody is going to love you or protect your body the way you do. Not saying people won't love or support you. But what I am saying is you are in charge of that love and health of yourself. Your business is the exact same thing. What I also learned is when you are not good mentally, emotionally, physically, your business will reflect that. So when you're not happy with yourself, it, it reflects your business. So you need to make sure that you're very passionate about what you're doing. Now, let me tell you a very unpopular opinion that a lot of people just don't agree with me on, and that's fine. I want to outsource everything, and I know that costs more money. However, for my mental space, I want to outsource. I don't want to wear 10,000 hats. I will hire a publisher. I will hire a marketer. I will hire a, pub a publicist. I will hire somebody to come and clean my house. I will hire somebody to meal prep because if it takes up too much of my time, because this is something that when you're truly healing and you're truly taking your mental health and just your health in general seriously, if what you're doing is overwhelming you, it costs too much. Because instead of you being productive, it's going to cause you to shut down and you lose that day or that hour or that week. Give yourself a break and outsource somebody. If you cannot for the life of you fold those clothes, just hire somebody. It does not have to be a consistent thing. Maybe you just need it for the month. Like for me, in the month of April, I traveled a lot. It was extremely, extremely busy. I had to outsource somebody to come clean my house. I couldn't get to it. I'm not ashamed of that. It worked for me, okay? Because I would have rather paid somebody to come and clean my house than come home to a dirty house, okay? Because that's a word. <laughs> But 
I, when it comes to my business, I want to build a team. Yes, I need to make money. So if I'm not making money, then I can't build a team. But what am I, what am I doing daily to make sure I'm hitting that goal? And don't get me wrong, y'all. My business has suffered because I haven't made the type of money that I could be making. But you know why I haven't made the type of money? Because I don't have a publicist. So knowing your weakness and knowing what it is that you need. I'm very open and authentic about my journey and what I'm going through because I want you to know that it is possible. Excuse me. It is possible. It's very doable. But we have to remember that we have to remember our limits. So you need to remember your limits. So in, in social work, we'll try to use terms like limitations instead of weaknesses or limitations instead of downfalls. It's just a shift in perspective. So my limitation was marketing and public uh, pub, um, public relations. That was my limitation because that's not what I do, y'all. Like I... <laughs> Anytime I record, like, the cars just be so loud, (laughs) y'all. Public relations, that's not what I do. I'm a community social worker. I will advocate for you. I can program plan. I can do some community development. I can create some policies. I can talk to you about grief. You talk about public relations. That's not what I do. That is not my expertise. I am definitely going to pay somebody to do that for me. That person will help me bring in more income so I can pay them and I can pay myself and I can pay the business. You have to think about stuff like that. Now, I say that and say like there are a lot of people right now who are doing everything on their own. And that's not to knock you. Like if you can do it on your own, God bless you. I don't have the mental capacity to do that. I am in charge of my radio show and directing and managing my radio show. I work directly with Total Entertainment Radio. However, this is my show and I'm on like I'm on the platform of Total Entertainment Radio. So I do the directing. I do the managing. I I do everything. It falls on me. I'm also in the process of opening a community center. All of that falls on me. The legal stuff, the inspections, working with the contractors. I'm also in the process of uh, well, I published I publish my book, but getting recognition for my book, trying to do a book tour, trying to work with other authors, trying to work with other publishers, trying to make money off of my book. I'm also doing that. So when it comes to the marketing and publishing, I don't physically or mentally have time for that. I have a lot of other things that I'm going on. So that's when it comes to those limitations and being honest with myself, like realistically, can I sit for a couple hours and work on Canva? No, I can't. It's also tax season, y'all. So like when you own your own business and you're working with your accountant and your financial advisor and trying to get taxes together, it's time consuming. And right now I have just some paperwork that has to go into it that's taking longer than what it would normally take. So me just being honest, I have to focus on that. That's more important than something like marketing right now. So you have to know that you have to be able to work with your team and you have to be able to know your limitations. So as I'm sitting here reflecting, I am so proud of myself. Yes, because like I went to Detroit and baby, I was living life. I was on Fox 2 News live, spoke on live TV, did such an amazing job, by the way. Make sure you go check out the website, check out YouTube because it would definitely be on there. Um, but also to having the reflection of, okay, I am really learning my limitations and I'm really learning what it is that I need help with. I'm not scared to ask for help. Okay. I can still celebrate and know my truth. I can still celebrate and know where I need that help at. And that's one thing. Never be afraid to ask for help. Never be afraid to be your authentic self. Always love who you are and always continue to be the person you say you are because you don't know what your story might do to the next person. I'm all about authenticity. I feel like social media has us not being as authentic, which kind of bothers me, but that's another show. (laughs) So I say all that to say like, 
we really have to be mindful of everything that we're putting out there and really just truly be able to know ourselves. And and I want you all to start reflecting. I want you to reflect on everything that you're doing, whether you're working a nine to five, whether you work in corporate, nonprofit, whether you work for yourself. I want you to truly investigate yourself, what it is that you need, what are your limitations, have you asked for help, if you haven't, why not? If yes, who has helped you? And what are your next steps? Let me tell y'all something. There's, It's always going to be something in life. There's always going to be something. You could finish a big project and within the next day, there's something else to do. But we need to start enjoying life. We need to start enjoying what we are doing. You can reflect and have limitations and still celebrate. And that that is the word for today. You can still reflect and still celebrate. So we are going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to do some more reflection. So make sure you tune back in. Welcome back to the Healing She Got Faith Show on Total Entertainment Radio. So let's let's talk about reflection. So when I was in Detroit last week, one of the reflections I had was I I remember being 15, being a freshman in high school, and I remember the day my father passed away. I remember walking down to the office and wondering what was going to be said to me in the next few minutes. As I walked through the door, I saw my sister walking up to me, shaking her head. My uncle was in the background and my favorite cousin was there. And my sister just saying, he didn't make it. He didn't make it. And falling and crying and Literally, the person that was supposed to be of support to us, literally, like, just walking up and being like, yeah, your dad's dead. I imagine, what if I never had the motivation to move past that moment? Because here I am 15 years later in Detroit with my team at Total Entertainment Radio, meeting people in their community, feeling like a star, living this lavish lifestyle. I have a radio show. I published my first book and I'm a homeowner. I'm about to open this community center. But I imagine what would life have looked like if I did not decide to push through, if I never turned my pain into passion. And while that might feel like a damper or a mood changer. Honestly, I feel that sometimes we have to reflect in order to be grateful of what has really happened to us. I was a person who was always hard on myself. I was my biggest critic. I didn't really like taking people's advice. I mean, I kind of still don't. That's, I guess I shouldn't say that. But I really don't. I don't like advice. That's just a fun fact about me. I don't like advice. I don't like to get it. I don't like to give it either. So please don't ask me for advice. (laughs) Um, That's another episode for another day. But I was that person that I knew I didn't fit in. Like I talked about earlier in the show, I knew I didn't fit in. I knew that life just kind of looked different compared to my peers. I kind of had to grow up a little bit earlier. I dealt with grief at a long, at a pretty young age. Um, But the schools I went to, like everybody was pretty much, like nobody was actually a child. We kind of just had to grow up and support ourselves in different ways, which was interesting because then you go to other school districts and their students don't really have like that much trauma. Um, everybody has their own trauma and their own story, but you see the difference in demographics and you see the difference in the school systems and you kind of wonder like, oh man, like I was never supposed to make it. I was never supposed to be successful. 
I was supposed to have like five kids, be on drugs, be homeless. Like there were a lot of statistics that were against people like me and coming from where we came from coming, like basically being a product of our environment. I say that to say I had to celebrate that. Like I should have never wrote a book, to be honest with you. I had str- I had trouble reading. I mean, and if you look at the stats of the district I graduated from, it's not uncommon. And to this day, it's still not uncommon to have very low reading scores. If you all um, are into documentaries, um, and it's also a book, but Waiting for Superman, that actually started my grad school program because I was so intrigued by their research on the public schools in the United States of America because I had lived that. Everything they talked about, I had literally lived that. Like the principals constantly in and out the school, teacher, the high turnover rate. I had lived all of that. And so when people started researching, like, well, why is this? And you learn that systematic racism is a thing. You learn that policies in place hold people like me back. Like, you learn a whole bunch of stuff where people always say, well, if I can make it out, you can make it out. Well, actually, no, that's not how that works because there's systems in place to hold certain people back. Like, we cannot continue to act like this country was founded off the best people on earth because mm, another talk show, (laughs) because they weren't, okay? And we have to realize that those of us who defeated the odds, like, we have something to celebrate. We have something to celebrate. It does take reflection because honestly, back in the day, I would be like, oh, what I went through really wasn't that bad. What I went through really wasn't that tough. Like people, you know, people always like to compare it like, oh, your situation could be a lot worse. Well, now what I tell people is I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about me. I don't care that the situation could could have been a lot worse. What I'm telling you, and this is just that social work part of me coming out, what I'm telling you is how I feel. I'm not asking to be compared to anybody else. I'm not asking for you to minimize what I am going through because it is uncomfortable for you. That's not what I'm doing. What I'm asking you is to, one, listen, if you have the mental capacity, and that's it. And if you don't have the mental capacity, you have the right to say, I don't have, I can't listen to you right now. Cool. Cool. You don't have to. You do not owe me that. You do not have to, okay? But as for me, I'm going to reflect and I'm going to celebrate because I've came a long way. There was a time where I was so insecure I would never get on camera. There was a time in my life where I did not take pictures because I felt that I was terribly ugly, okay? But listen, I overcame that. I overcame that. And as I sat in Detroit last week and really reflected every day, because I also decided to start this six-month healing journey, and um, we're a couple weeks in, a lot has happened because I am now starting to be more honest with myself. I'm now starting to forgive people. I'm starting to understand that everything is not personal, but I'm also understanding that when other people don't show up, I still have to show up for myself. I can't depend on other people to love me the way I love them. It's just, it just doesn't work that way. I have to continue when I sign contracts and they fall through, I have to continue to go hard for my business. When my body needs rest, I have to rest. And so as I've decided to truly invest in myself and to truly be honest with myself, like ever since I started this healing journey, it's been a lot of sleeping going on. And a lot of that is not like a lot of people say, oh, that's depression, which I've been very honest about in the past. Like I do struggle with situational depression and anxiety. However, when you allow your body to heal and it no longer has to be in survival mode, your body is starting to say, wow, I can rest. Wow, we can actually sleep without a worry. We don't have to toss and turn no more. We don't have to um, worry about the next thing. And so I've been doing a lot of sleeping. I've been doing a lot of sleeping. And in that is powerful. Because there's a lot of us who stay up majority of the night. There's a lot of us who live off of three to four hours of sleep. And we don't know that we're killing our bodies. 
because our bodies survive off of sleep. So with that being said, just being honest in that moment and allowing myself to truly embrace part of my healing journey is being able to be proud of myself and being able to love myself. Part of my healing journey is being comfortable with who I am. Part of my healing journey is allowing myself the freedom to be who I am and appreciate who I am and love who I am. Part of my journey is learning to let go, whether that's people, old jobs, memories, food, whatever it is. Part of my journey is knowing when to let go. I've had a lot of serious conversations with a lot of different people. They have not been the prettiest. They have been hurtful to to the people and to me because people are so used to me sitting back and just allowing stuff to happen. I'm no longer allowing stuff to happen. I don't want to allow it because it's killing me inside. It is killing me inside. I no longer want to feel that pain inside of me. What I do want is I want people to understand where I'm coming from. You do not have to agree with me, but I need you to understand. I'm not one of those people that I want to walk away and just be done. Like, absolutely not. Like, I want to be able to have a conversation. But also, too, knowing that, like, you can't get closure from everybody. You can't get closure from every situation. So, yeah, it has been hard and it has been a little difficult and there are painful um conversations that are have you know that you have to have that's also part of grief no matter which way you look that's grief every time we turn around we're grieving something whether that's a relationship whether that's a job whether that's a house whether that's someone who actually passed away we are constantly grieving and as adults we are taught to suck it up and keep moving I no longer want us adults to suck it up and keep moving. I want us to reflect and celebrate. It shouldn't be this hard, but we have to combat these systems that are put into place to make us think that that is what we are supposed to be doing. Because the systems work easier when we just follow them. But when you have, what what did the car say earlier? Rebel, uh, Rebel? When you rebel against the systems, well, now they're being challenged and now they have to change something, okay? People, systems, policies get uncomfortable when they are challenged. When you do not look like their box, you look like a problem. You're not necessarily the problem. You just see that something needs to change and you're the one that's like, why are we still doing this, okay? We have to learn to advocate for ourselves. So this episode really should have been called Reflect, Celebrate, Advocate, okay? But we can talk about advocacy um, more in depth in a different episode. But what I'm saying is we really have to give ourselves grace. Reflect on where you came from and celebrate where you are today. Celebrate the moment. Be present. So we're going to take one more break. And when we come back, we're going to finish up the episode. Welcome back to the Healing She Got Faith show. If you made it this far, thank you. Shout out to my listeners. Shout out to Total Entertainment Radio. Shout out to everybody who showed love last week. I'm so grateful for you all. Yes. So as we wrap up this show, let's just kind of reflect on where we've come from. So Healing She Got Faith started off as a blog. It started off as an idea. Okay. It started off as an idea like... Um, I honestly wanted to call myself the healing social worker, but that name was already taken. And I was having a real, a real hard time being real creative. And honestly, like she got faith is my social media handles. So I was like, well, healing social worker. So I just kept the name healing and healing. She got faith like is inviting you into the, into the healing journey. And so the healing journey is nonstop. Like it's constantly just there. It's not linear. It's it's not going to look pretty all the time. Sometimes it will, but not all the time. 
just like grief. Grief is not always going to look pretty. Grief is not always going to make sense. I don't think grief makes sense at all, but listen, y'all can listen to all my other episodes about that. So we started off as a blog. We started off as just like really social media. And as I started to become more comfortable in who I am, my worth, what I provide, as I started to get noticed, I became a business. As I became a business, I published a book. Then I decided to add on a guided journal and planner. So now I have a book bundle. Then I got recognized by Total Entertainment Radio. Now I have a radio talk show. Then I started to become sponsors with different community events in different states. So not only was I just in St. Louis, Missouri, all of a sudden I was in Detroit, Florida, Minnesota, Boston, New York. I mean, you name it. Like I just slowly started to get recognized, which is so powerful. Like we started off as a blog with raggedy YouTube and raggedy blogs. Okay. But I still have such a, like such a long way to go, but I don't need to not celebrate how far I've come. Like, yes, we we can always do better. We can always grow. We can always get bigger, whatever that looks like. But to be able to be like, yeah, I've been on Fox 2. Yeah, I got a team down in Detroit. Yeah, I got a community center open. Yeah, like, yeah, I even have like an online bookstore, okay? To be able to get to that point. And I was just some little girl who could barely read who just kept taking loss after loss after loss, and here I am today, okay? And the thing is, like, I know a lot of us, we do stuff for other people, but I'm going to be completely honest when I say this. I'm doing this for me. I'm doing this for little Lisa. Not to say that I hope I don't reach other people, but I hope that when people see me and when people come into contact with me, they're encouraged to do stuff for themselves And I hope they're encouraged to like really embrace their own story. Like, I think I'm pretty dope. I know I'm pretty dope. I'm pretty legit. But I don't want you to do stuff because I did it. I want you to look at me and be like, you know what? She talked about her ugly chapters. I'm going to talk about mine. And I want that because at the end of the day, each of us have our own story. Each of us have our own journey. Each of us have our own pathway, however you want to call it. We each have our own. And I want us to start embracing that. I want us to start fulfilling that. I want us to start feeling exactly what that is. Okay? Make me a promise. Matter of fact, get you a book bundle at healingshegotfaith.org in the guided journal and in the novel. We make pledges to ourselves. So get you a journal and a book so you can make that pledge to yourself. Because I want you to start loving you the way you love the world. Okay, so a couple housekeepings. As y'all know, the radio talk show comes on every Monday at 3 p.m. Central. You can go to TotalNTRadio.com, click Listen Now, and catch us there. If you miss it on Mondays, we do have replays. You'll just have to go to my website and click on the replays. Replays are released every Tuesday at 3 p.m., and they are there forever or until I take them down. But right now, they're there forever. Check out the website. We have the blog that is released every Wednesday. Occasionally, we have Reflection Friday, which is an extra blog, which those those are pretty fun. We have a couple things in the shop. So go to healingshegotfaith.org slash shop. Check it out what we got. We do got our intention sessions, which is a cohort or a monthly meeting where you meet like uh, like like-minded people that are focusing on their healing journey, their business plans. People are really starting to recognize their worth and we come together and we work we work through it. We set our intentions for the next 30 days and we hold each other accountable. We also have our online bookshop which is through um bookshop.org so you just go to bookshop.org slash shop slash healing she got faith and go ahead and buy some books you can buy some affirmation cards they even have an audio option um everyone has a story is now on kindle so if you have not bought it and you're you know you're an e-version type of person you can definitely go to kindle you just go to amazon type and everyone has a story click on the auto not the audible the uh kindle version and it will show you but we will be having an audio version soon y'all so be on the lookout we'll also be having a community center launching soon. So yeah, a lot of big things. You can check us um, check us out on YouTube, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, 
pretty much all the popular social medias. We are there. Y'all, I want to thank you for coming back each and every week. I want to thank you for the support and the love. I would not be here without you. I appreciate y'all. So please continue to love you the way you love the world. And please continue just to just to show yourself love, y'all, because you really do deserve it. I believe it and I hope you believe it. I love y'all. Catch y'all next Monday.